madam, sir, welcome to this review of the all new VW Amarok here with Thomas and Autogefühl for you in 4K full screen and full length. Let's go. In this review, on road and off road, how capable is the new Volkswagen Amarok? And also, there's the sibling here, the Ford Ranger. They're built together in the same plant. We've had that one as the Raptor recently. How similar are they? What are the differences? We'll tell you all about it. This one here is in mid blue, beautiful Thomas blue color, the Aventura trim, one of two top trim levels. There you can see the silver contrast right here. It looks really beautiful. It looks strong, but clean at the same time. Big Amarok stamping right here. Then headlamps, LED standard, matrix LED, the IQ light is an option, but we also have other trims for you today. For example, the other top trim level would be the Panamericana, that one in a beige color. Or if you go a trim below that, the style trim here in the red vehicle color, that one already has some design elements, but a little bit less, for example, just the lower contrasting part. And also, what about the base trim level here in the white vehicle color? Then you have more plastic at the lower end, for example, and less design elements, but also lower entry price. We'll soon also compare the interior, but let's continue here with the strong exterior. You like my hat here for today? You know, I always try to dress accordingly to the vehicle. That's one of my hobbies. So sometimes it works very well, sometimes not so good, but I think today it does work, right? <laughs> the lengthy in the new generation, 5 meters 35 or 211 inches. And that means an overall length increase, about 10 centimeters or four inches, and the wheelbase increase even more 17 centimeters or seven inches also has to do with the new ford ranger generation because they are building it together in a ford plant here in south africa the raptor is built in thailand in a separate plant because it also uses different parts but the chassis is the same ranger and amarok indeed they have different stylings here for example this aventura top trim comes with these chroma like mirrors side steps roof rails contrasting then you have this massive sports bar right here also with the Amarok Aventura logo this is a very beautiful styling indeed and about wheels 16 to 18 inch also maximum available with the all-terrain and then road tires up to 21 inch these here are the biggest road tires and they have a massive look looks really cool but might they also reduce comfort we'll find out in the driving part so this one here basically the road version VW also has a, indeed more road focus than Ford. They also trim the suspension a little bit stiffer and also make the steering a little bit more direct, whereas Ford, of course, also with the Raptor, the maximum off-road version, more goes into this off-road direction. But make no mistake, this one is also very off-road capable, has also like the 80 centimeter weighting depth or also the around 30 degrees approaching angle in the front. Of course, in this case, then you would need the all-terrain tires. We'll also use them later on on a different vehicle, which is more suitable for off-roading. But this one here, to me, the most beautiful road version there is, both from Ranger and Amarok. In the rear, a modern styling, really strong. Here, cool signature with the tail lamps and then the stamped in Amarok batching right here. Interesting that when you have the V6 diesel, strongest engine, then you can also have 3.5 tons in towing capacity. It really depends on the individual engine version. Payload is 1.2 tons overall. Oh, we already collected some dust here. No wonder. Then let's open this rear hatch. On the hatch actually is quite cool. We have some like, like cup holders and behind this rubber lip, there's a measurement scale, for example, measuring like a piece of timber that's on here. But on the Ranger Raptor, we had like this clamp openings here that you can really secure it, but that's not the main you know, purpose of this vehicle here. Of course, you can always have a nice picnic on here and either from the front cabin, you can open it or with a button right here, then you can open this top cover electronically. It's a very cool feature if you have that option, but it looks fancy and it's of course a very practical thing. You don't have to open it manually. This is the double cap. It means more cabin space, less loading length. There's also single cap version available than with longer bed, for example, for markets like here, South Africa. Europe concentrates on the double cap. Here, the length overall in the double cap is about 1 meter 60 or 61 inches. And the width right here at the entry, that's important, 120 in meters or 47 inches. Rugged material, but it can also be a little bit more simple 
as we show you here in the low trim. And this is here the direct comparison, the top trim luxury version, so to speak here, the Amarok Aventura or the Panamericana. And then on the other side, this is the workhorse here, single cab, rather the commercial vehicle variant and also lowest trim here. See here the plastic cladding and everything in a simple style, but I think it also looks pretty cool. Here then, of course, with the longer bed and then, of course, a little bit less space. So no rear bench in the front and also a simpler interior. We'll also compare it then later in the interior part. You know, we are a channel of details and then we can take a detailed look here. Look at that. The daytime running light and the top trim and here comparison to the base trim is also different. Different. So this one also doesn't look bad at all. But of course, you know, this, this span here around that looks even more, you know, just a little bit more modern and luxurious. And it becomes even more obvious here when you activate the turning indicators or hazard lights here then it replaces the daytime running light and the same thing happens on the other side then right here. And in the back base one here gets a normal light bulb as turning indicator whereas the top LED trim here gets a small LED, really small turning indicator. Yeah LED then but it's tiny for such a huge truck isn't it? The double cap here comparison to the single cap, the overall length is the same. It's just the straight of then passenger versus more cargo space. And I think it really looks cool here also in the commercial base version when it's available in your market. So why not save a lot of money and go for that one then. And the bed here of the cargo version, the base version, it folds down in a heavier way. So the other one is indeed dampened. Very interesting. So, and then you might remember, yeah, you can put <laughs> like this here, this uh, water tank here with these tension belts, you can secure up to 400 kilograms then. That's also also very interesting and the length you might remember it was 1 meter 60 or about 62 inches with the double cap here the single cap it's way longer of course no rear bench but then you have about like 2 meter 35 of the length or about 92 inches you can see here this 2 meters or um, 88 inches stick here disappears completely and you can also get some interesting third-party equipment not available from works but they're different suppliers offering this, for example, like this roof trend, because this roof can also carry 350 kilograms of weight. So off-road, outdoor camping, way to go. This is the car key. This is then clearly Ford design. Not too great, but also not bad. Then door closing sound here. Also not too good, not too bad. <laughs> then inside of the doors. Interesting is it's the same, of course, for the Ranger and the Amarok here, this special um, opening lever is a very unique solution indeed and the materials here are also more or less basic but important thing is here for your elbow you have this soft touch leatherette here. Seating position and steering wheel. The hell? Oh <laughs> yeah we, <laughs> we got the steering wheel on the right side here for today because these are the earliest production versions you know the South African market for example gets of course then the steering wheel on the right side but there will be also be the left steerers available of course at the later stage. Then let's take a look at the steering wheel this will be the same of course real buttons here on the steering wheel and this the steering wheel like the controls this is more premium here in the VW version than in the Ford actually and up and down in and out it's a nice and smooth process indeed. By the way if you see a contrast stitching right here that means it's an animal skin wrap but base versions can also be um, bought without an animal skin wrap than if you want to go completely animal free. As for the seats, the base version would start with fabric seats and they are actually the most breathable ones. And then you can also keep the price low. Mid trim level style, we can not show you that one today, but that would be a seat with microfiber. That could also be a cool solution because mid trim, already some more premium touch, not too much more money than also breathable microfiber. It also looks more premium than the pure fabric version could be a cool tip and then these ones here in the Aventura these are actually animal skin seats with perforation and in the Panamericana different structure without perforation also animal skin so if you want to go animal free it's mid trim level with the velour with the microfiber or base fabric and seating position and comfort is really good also for long journeys no problem at all and yeah there's plenty of headroom left even with 
189 or 6 for 2. So the interior of the Amarok, similar with the Ranger in a way that we have the vertical screen layout. We haven't seen it from Volkswagen yet. However, this yeah, really changed with Volkswagen. We'll see very soon. Stay subscribed here. And then you have the steering wheel. We always show that to you with the real nice buttons and digital instruments. But you have two different sizes, actually. This is the big setup, two times around 12 inch. The smaller would actually start 10 inch here and 8 inch on the other side. However, you also still have some manual buttons. For example, in the lower part here, a manual volume knob with some clicking sound and also a drive mode selector, for example, then you can pick the different driving modes here. And the front part here, inductive charging pad, USB-A and USB-C charging. And then this shifting lever here, really big, really massive. That's what I said. <laughs> then D, N, R, reverse. Then also the rear view camera gets active, also with a fake drone view from above. And the fun thing is when you have it here on drive mode and then shut down the engine, because you're finished driving in here, it automatically goes forward again. Digital instruments looks really fancy indeed. And the cool thing is when you switch the driving modes, then you have very nice visualizations for each driving mode. And this also basically comes from this Ford idea. They did that for the Ranger. Well, VW has implemented their own 3D animations and that looks really, really fancy as well. I love that. It's an emotional feature. You could say it's more like playing around, but something is just lovely to look at, isn't it? Infotainment system. It is the Ford back end, but it is the VW front end, actually. That is very interesting. And you can see here, this is the GPS, the car internal one. It's actually also quite responsive. And it is one that is actually very well usable. And here, VW profits from Ford because Ford has a better backend at the moment for the infotainment system. Um, and so it's also more stable. The temperature is selected right here like this or like this. Not my favorite thing indeed is the seat heating or here the whole climate menu where I can also then um, uh, actually control where the vents are coming from like this. This is also a very nice visualization, isn't it? And this in the top part here, once again, the main menu. Here you also have the vehicle settings. You can, by the way, here for this display, select different modes. So for example, auto mode or dark or light. This would be then the light mode. There we go. I prefer the dark mode or set to auto that it, re it adapts according to the light. Now, what about the voice input if the temperature unit is so complicated? Set temperature to 22 degrees. Setting temperature to 24 degrees. Uh, well, so it works in theory, but that was the wrong direction indeed. <laughs> and Android Auto or Apple CarPlay integration. It's really large indeed. Um, so let's take a look at that. Here we go. This overview or like this. This looks really crisp and clear indeed. So like that. And yeah, that's old school trance music. Harman Kardon sound system. Is decent sound, not the best ones I've heard, you know, but yeah, for music lovers, you should go for the Harman Kardon system. Then the drive mode selector, this would be rear wheel drive. 4A is the orbit of automatic. It's predominantly rear wheel drive and just some, you know, front axle and on demand. That's actually the ideal mode for most situations. This one then for off-road driving, 4H, this is with the center differential lock then that you have 50-50 permanent all-wheel drive actually. For L, then you have to put the driving selector also to neutral, that it actually works. And then there's the off-road gear reduction for 4 low. If you have even more extreme off-road situations, if it gets even more extreme, then you have the rear differential lock right here. Front differential lock, like in the Ranger Raptor, is not available. Cup holders are also with adaptive function, actually decent. And this armrest here is not that well attached. That wouldn't happen in a VW vehicle. Actually, there you see it's more the Ford build quality indeed. Here underneath, then with some more space. Yeah, this is typical, you know, uh, a comment. This is like a meme here. Timestamp Thomas in the rear seats because sometimes it looks funny when me as a tall person sitting here in the back. Headroom is no problem actually. It works also for tall people, but legroom is very limited indeed. So it only works if I use this recess. So the front seat 
would need to be a little bit higher, maybe like this, then it works. But you know, as the seat was, as I was driving, it's really cramped with the knees, so there's not much leg room here in the rear, that's for sure. Then you can see here, you could a little bit. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> These are the cup holders, not adaptive though. More basic build quality here indeed. And with the rear bench here, you can do two following things. By the way, in the lower part, you also have 12 volt power supply and a real power socket here. That's quite cool. Then here with that rear bench, you can either fold down this one here completely. Not sure if it's, it's much use or something. Um, maybe if you want to put some more rugged things on here and don't want to damage the seats. And you can also here in the front, you can put out this one here and then lift the bench up. And then there's, for example, here, um, you know, like for changing tires and so on. So some more small spaces. And interesting also here, the interior comparison in the single cap and lowest trim. Here, first of all, with fabric seats. So this is actually fitting quite quite nicely. Um, they are also quite comfortable. They also have some side support and they are actually a little bit more breathable than the slick materials. So very interesting indeed, why not? Here also with manual gearbox and also the other screens told you earlier. This one here is the little bit smaller screen than here. So a small screen on the left side and also the smaller digital instruments. And here, this is also the PU steering wheel, so hard touch. Um, but actually, overall, for a base, low trim version, it makes a good quality impression indeed. Under the head, uh, under the hood, <laughs> there is either a two liter TDI, 150 horsepower, 170 horsepower, or with around 200 horsepower, then with twin turbo. Next step would be this one here, the 3 liter V6 TDI with around 250 horsepower, strong as diesel. And you can also get on petrol side a 2.3 liter EcoBoost by Ford, this one then with 300 horsepower. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge here with the VW Amarok in the new generation, driving the 3 liter V6 diesel. And this is then a very powerful torque intensive engine indeed. Here around 250 horsepower, so a very torque intensive engine that is, so I always have good performance accelerating it out. First of all, driving performance, what counts for all the different engine models is, indeed, VW has tuned the steering to a more direct input. The Raptor, already for the Ranger version, has a quite direct input, but here the base VW input is just more direct in itself. It feels more passenger car-alike, it is easier to steer, more fun on road driving, and we'll see later on also if it makes any problem in off-road driving. So what I mean by that here, look at that. There's no dead zone area from the steering. Always good command on the road. It's a lot of fun to steer it indeed. And yeah, oh, yeah, here in South Africa, it can happen that you get from a road situation to an off-road situation. And then a vehicle like this is, of course, a very suitable one. Uh, yeah, we also have another beige Amarok in front of us. <laughs> they are now putting out the camera to film us behind, probably. Yeah, that looks really amazing indeed with the dust now. Yeah, and the thing is here with the 21 inch top wheels, yeah, it, they do reduce the comfort significantly indeed. So I would advise for better driving comfort, stay with smaller wheels indeed, even if it's road use. These wheels are of course best to show off to your friends. And when the road is even, then it's no problem at all, you know. As soon as you have some bumps on the road or some soft off-roading, they will significantly reduce the comfort. So again, my tip would be stay with some smaller wheels. The suspension is not bad at all, but then in combination with the big wheels, a lot of bumps are being transported indeed to your body. That's what you have to calculate with. Um, usually here you would say either in the rear drive only mode or you would go with the 4H mode, which I'm on at this moment, because then predominantly the rear wheel wheels are always driven or powered but then again, if you need some traction on the front wheels, it is always possible and it is sent to the front wheels. And like this, you know, situation like here, up uphill, and then maybe I accelerate a little bit harder or something. And then also the front wheels are attacking the road. There is also a gauge here in the instruments I can take a look at, and then I can always see the all-wheel drive distribution in that case. So it's a very practical thing, definitely. 
in general, the driving position is very comfortable. You can also imagine longer rides. The microfiber seats or the fabric seats, to me, probably would be even more comfortable. Or looking forward to drive the microfiber seats at, at a later stage, because here, no matter if animal skin or other red surface, the slick surfaces are always a little bit harder just from the um, you know from from the surface here at the moment i already have some power on the front wheels but more power on the rear wheels so the rear wheel bias indeed remains is there a big difference driving the ranger and the amarok well indeed the difference is that the steering input here to me is a little bit more precise with the amarok that's what i really like um, suspension i also talked to the engineers and they said they tuned it here a little bit stiffer for the amarok to again have a little bit more road focus so when you're driving off-road, then it will be better with the Ranger. On-road, you will have more feeling for the car with the Amarok once again. Other than that, since the chassis is also the same, it won't be the biggest difference. What I felt now, you know, bit by bit is, however, that some of the materials being used and the user interface and so on, knobs on the steering wheel, is a little bit better with the VW. So when you're driving this one here, you maybe feel let's say less off-road rugged cool but you feel a little bit more sophisticated i think that's this kind of differentiation also from the exterior design and it also delivers what it promises you know the ranger with a little bit more off-road focus and this off-road design exterior and interior and the amarok then more with this on-road emphasis both in exterior and interior design and also driving wise and I think that's actually a quite clever choice to do that in that way. And if you wonder, by the way, well, why have VW gone, gone away from this separate setup anyways? Well, if they would not have done this cooperation here with Ford, the Amarok would have died. There would have been no Amarok successor. And um, in this case, for everyone who still wants to have an Amarok, you can still have it, yeah. They, <laughs> now they're waiting for us. Yeah, shall we get them the shots for the cam? Yeah, of course. The driving mode selector, I mean, usually you could just leave it in normal mode and that's it, but there are different modes. Um, for example, this, um, this slippery mode, for example, um, or also your deep snow and sand and so on. And then also the off-road functions adapt to that accordingly. But more to that, definitely soon in our off-road driving part, Honda driving here so far is a lot of fun. You feel sophisticated. It is a truck and you get a lot of attention. We were driving just a couple of minutes and you know people were lowering the window sack. Oh, what a cool truck. Um, it's really awesome. So people love it actually design-wise. At the same time, it literally drives not like a huge truck, but it drives as easy as a normal passenger car. And fuel economy, if you do some more efficient driving here with a 3 liter V6, around 11 liters on 100 kilometers 12 liters on 100 kilometers if you use the power a little bit more if you also have some soft off-roading section like gravel roads and so on so that's around the 20 mbg mark us and around 25 mbg uk the smaller diesel expected to consume a little a little less of fuel on one kilometers um, so a little bit or a couple more mbg plus and the 2.3 liter petrol engine we have to see about that probably also around in that range and now to some off-road driving we switch to a vehicle with 18 inch all-terrain tires and i also can tell you more about differences than to the ford ranger raptor we've driven that one earlier and here first of all i just stay in the normal road mode because this then you can still for this car count as soft off-road driving I also see the all-wheel the all drive distribution right here and in that way I predominantly drive rear-wheel drive. It's not a strong obstacle yet. Here with these all-terrain tires of course I have more comfort than with these road 21 inch wheels where I have only you know, hardly any dampening left. If you could directly compare it with the tires we had on the Ranger Raptor of course these were even more off-road suitable and softer. So, the, the smaller you go with the wheels, the softer it will be and also the better for off-road driving. And what you also feel in the Ranger Raptor, you had this adaptive suspension, which uh, did a great job actually in balancing even everything out, that you had great road driving. At the same time, 
you also had great off-road driving. And here, definitely the VW setup from the suspension is a little bit stiffer. On the road, that's good. But on off-road driving, this vehicle is still super capable, yes. But it's a little bit less comfortable than on off-road driving when it has this stiffer setup overall. The steering, as I said earlier, is also set out for road driving. Really cool looking off track here, isn't it? However, the thing is that it's not too bad here either. So I don't need the off-road setup of the steering. I rather prefer the VW steering setup. It's a little bit more crisp, a little bit more direct. You uh, feel what you're doing all the time. At the same time, when it gets a little bit more challenging, it's no problem at all, actually. So it's a lot of fun to drive this vehicle off-road here. You have a good visibility here to the front, here now with some, you know, leaning left and right. And so far, even that one, the car can easily do that in the normal driving mode, because when I need some more uh, torque on the front wheels, the car will do that automatically. As soon as it gets more challenging, then I would pick the 4H mode, that is then the permanent um, permanent all-wheel drive, and if it would be even stronger, like with rock climbing and so on, this is then the time for the 4L, then with the off-road gear reduction 4L for, for low, but you can really then adjust it to the situation what you need. The thing is, even when you're driving off-road, it is more fun to use the normal mode because you're just more flexible, you know, you have rear-wheel drive predominantly, and when you don't need strong front traction yet, better leave it in that mode. You will have, you know, just more fun, just more maneuverability. Um, also, when you drive a little bit faster off-road and so on, it will just feel more flexible, the whole vehicle. And then you can adjust it bit by bit. So now it gets a little bit heavier, and then we switch to the 4 H and that means now we have permanent all-wheel drive because I now also need that front traction for this rock climbing, this crawling here, a little bit slower. I also have to pick my line wisely here. So um, because it's always critical that you do not damage the tires when you hit a stone in a very bad angle or something. And of course it gets a little bit slower now, but you know, this, whoa, <laughs> these off-road driving situations, um, the thing is, on camera, I mean, we're now, we were totally sideways now, and on camera it looks so simple, but when you feel the G-forces here sitting in the vehicle, then you know what is actually happening, and it's really an extreme situation. This vehicle is really very much off-road capable, and I mean, this is what I know. You know, when we do off-road driving parts, there's always a comment like, oh, my Ford Fiesta can also do that. The first part, yes. This one, what we just, just did, probably not. <laughs> um, and for now, the 4H is fine. Um, this is not recommended for road driving, by the way. You can theoretically, but you lose some agility because you have this distribution and rear and front locked, basically. I also see it here in the visualization. And you feel it when you turn in it's not as extreme as with really old pickup trucks, but here you feel the turning circle is not as narrow and so on. So the car feels less agile, but you need it then, of course, for that front wheel drive traction while off-road driving. Really beautiful off-road track we have here in South Africa near Cape Town today. And now it's time for four low indeed. Put it to the neutral gear selector here. Then I can switch it to the 4L. ESC off completely. Now I'm in 4L and this is then the mode of a gear reduction. So I have more, I cannot drive uh, in a high speed or fast way now, but now I'm really slowly here getting on these trails. Now I have the best torque, the best traction for off-road driving. Wow, and this is once again on the camera, it looks not extreme, but it is extreme. Now, yeah, there was some spin detected since I have now the off-road mode available. Yeah, and that might also be a case now. Yeah, we might try to the rear differential lock. So that is available then just with a press of the button because um, when the rear differential lock is not activated, it can happen that, for example, when one wheel doesn't have traction at all, they just keep spinning, spinning, spinning. But that way now with the rear differential lock, both tires left and right at the rear, they then work in a very in a, in a very same speed because they're locked by the differential lock and then you have you know slowly even more traction at the side where you have traction on at this moment and then 
you can almost get up anywhere. And yeah, we heard it earlier, the ascending angle all, also around 30 degrees. So you can really approach a lot of big things. Very important off-road driving technique is, by the way, when you have something really, you know, big ahead or like a big dip or something. We just did that um, as well. Um, then you can approach it, you know, a little bit side with, with, the, with the front wheels because the same way, imagine you are going up a hill straight or you're going a hill up in serpentines, you know, like in curvy roads. That way it is easier basically and not that steep. And the same happens with the front wheels um, that you can basically, uh, you know, have a less steep approach than to it. A very important technique. Here, of course, I can just go straight more or less. And now I, I'm not driving too fast, but I have to keep on the gas now that we can still make this up. Big challenge now for the vehicle. Whew. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of fun. Getting really rough now. Steady speed is very then important. Slow but steady speed. And you've seen now here also, I'm keeping my thumbs on the steering wheel, not in the steering wheel, as I recommend for road driving, because the steering wheel might change direction quite quickly. And that could actually dislocate my thumbs. And yeah, if you still want to see some autofuel reviews in the future, that might not be a good idea to dislocate the thumbs right now. So here now going in these really big dips. Car is also sliding a little bit because the ground is a little bit sandy. So very challenging off-road terrain here, but yeah, definitely very off-road cable. Not as off-road cable as the Ranger Raptor, of course, because it is just such a special version then of the Ford Ranger sibling. Um, but definitely for a more or less normal uh, VW Amarok, yeah, definitely also step ahead. So if you compare the off-road capabilities previous generation to this generation Amarok, it definitely has been enhanced and even more comfortable with more off-roadish tires and, you know, with even smaller uh, rims. But overall, still also very impressed what this one here can do off-road and also in a very, let's say, easy manner. You don't have to be the biggest off-road expert. Of course, I already have some off-road experience, meanwhile, over the last 10 years. Um, but it's very, you know, very likable handling also here in off-road driving. And now tune in to the Ford Ranger Raptor review, recently in this new generation as well, to compare it, or the previous generation Amrock, if you want to buy one used.